In writing fiction, the more fantastic the tale, the plainer the prose should be. Don't ask your readers to admire your words when you want them to believe your story. Ben Bova. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. Today's question is one that I see on the forums quite a bit and something that we haven't been able to get into other series at some point or another. So we wanted to address it here during our frequently asked questions. The question is, why is it I can understand all of these big words, but when I sit down to write, they're all elementary school words? Our quick answer to this is, don't worry about it, just write the elementary school words. Trust us, it is better, it is simpler, it is easier for your reader to digest and understand when you are just using simple words. I also want to address the question itself because there is a false premise being implied within the question, and that is that big words are somehow better than elementary school words, that having big words is part of what makes you a good author. A lot of people who are stepping into the writing world feel like they have to hold themselves to this standard, and it is simply not true. We've said it before, but the reason why it's not true is because the word choice as you're writing is about getting the right word, not the biggest word. So really, especially when you're writing that first draft, you need to just write whatever word works. Whatever word you can come up with in the moment, don't stall to try to come up with the bigger, fancier, more complicated word when something simple will work. And during the editing phase, please do not right-click, thesaurus, that word looks big. <laughs> You're not impressing anybody. If someone does know what that word means, then you're likely to turn them off because it's not the right connotation. English is a fantastic language for storytelling, and a lot of people whose second language is English prefers writing in English because there are so many intricate words and connotations for concepts out there. But really, whatever is most natural, whatever is comfortable, is far more valuable to the reader than words that are there to make the author feel smart and superior. There are several reasons why big words can be a turnoff for readers, and all of them are bad for the survival of your book. The first one that is most obvious to me is, if I don't know what this word means, I will set the book down, pick up my phone to Google what the word means. And while I'm there, I'm also going to check my games that I play, and I'm going to double check my social media, and now you've completely lost me as a reader. And now I'm on TikTok doom scrolling instead of reading your book. Way too easy. It is very rare that constantly looking up words makes for an enjoyable reading experience. I don't want to be pulled away from a book, and I also don't want to feel stupid while I read. Yes, I may have a college degree, and it is in communications, and I do have a very large general vocabulary. But there are some times that I am reading a book and I run into some words that I have never heard before that I didn't know existed. And it kind of makes me go, why? Why is this word in here when this other word that is far more common and easier to understand fits the definition perfectly? Probably better than the big word does. It can feel good as a reader to go, hey, I know what that word means. But if you're throwing 17 per page at your readers, they're going to be so focused on the vocabulary that they are completely missing this story. I would say every once in a while, no more than once per chapter, can you throw in a word that you think your audience wouldn't know. Obviously, if you're writing middle grade, things are a little different than if you're writing classic adult thrillers. Overall, having a big vocabulary isn't about writing big words. Yes, as a writer, you need to have a big vocabulary. You need to know a lot of words. But the reason is so that you can choose the right word for the moment. 
and not in your first draft. You can pick the right word in your second or third draft. I like to use the illustration of Hawkeye. Did you see that TV show a few years back now? He has a myriad of different arrows in his quiver, and he pulls out the right one for the moment. The more arrows, the more variety he has in that quiver, the better the arrow is for his purposes. As an author, having the largest number of arrows in that quiver means you can successfully communicate and accomplish your goals by picking the right one, not necessarily the biggest one. There is absolutely no harm in learning new words. There is no harm in having a large vocabulary. There are lots of social media pages or email lists that you can sign up for to learn complex words. Is it Merriam-Webster that has the word of the day? Yeah. And they're usually very weird words that you've never heard of before. And it's great. They are so useful. But they're rarely going to be useful in your storytelling. Because if you didn't know it and you had to learn it, your reader is probably in the same position. We will always advocate building your arsenal, but use with caution. The elementary school words, like our question posed, tend to be the better option because you're not throwing up roadblocks for your readers. The other thing to consider with this is especially if you want to have an audiobook. Having big words when you are going to put your book into audiobook format isn't always good. One, your narrator needs to know how to pronounce it. So if they're not familiar with the word, you may have some weirdly pronounced words in your story. Two, it is far more difficult to pause an audiobook and go look up a word when you're listening because one, you don't know how it's spelled. Plus, I saw on TikTok recently a perfect example of why sometimes using the common word for something is better when you have an audiobook. And that is for the word moo. That is M O U E. It's kind of supposed to be a pout. Get that like pouty face. But when you have it in audiobook format and you don't see that it is spelled M O U E, It sounds like somebody is turning with a moo and you just hear (laughs) Especially those smaller but more complex words are often fading out of the language because there's a homonym that means something completely different. As Lee has mentioned a couple of times, Word choice is different if you are writing especially middle grade and early YA. When I was in middle school, I was told to find books that had one word on every page that I didn't know. This would help me learn and build my vocabulary. They told the whole class this. This was especially weird for me because I was no longer reading middle grade. I was reading Dean Koontz and Stephen King. And these books were talking about concepts that I couldn't understand. But they had words you didn't know. Yeah. Believe it or not, I was even more of a literalist back then. So I was being the good kid by reading Pennywise slaughtering children. (laughs) So the rules change a little bit when the reader is reading for an educational purpose as well as an entertainment purpose. So understanding your target audience and what words are new to them can be a huge help in deciding which word's going to be the better one to use. But in general, when you're writing that middle grade early YA, you want to use simpler words. You want to make it a fun read. You can go look at the Percy Jackson books for really good examples of good writing styles that is a little bit challenging for maybe that middle grade era, but is still easy to read and simple to follow. And as a storyteller, there is a whole other aspect in word choice that we want to address, and that is the voice of your point of view character. If your character is an anthropologist, they might be using very different words than your eight-year-old. All of these things play into the voice of the character. That is a much better filter to run your word choice through than is it a complex versus an elementary school word. And remember, your narrator is a character as well. This is especially key 
when you are writing that third person close or first person point of views. Because whoever's point of view we are taking, their voice needs to maintain throughout the narration of the story. So if you have a geologist, they may not know a lot of big fancy English specific words, but they may know a lot more Latin names for things for like rocks. So keep your word choices relevant to the character. If you're writing a Klaus Baudelaire type character where this kid likes words and he's always spouting a new and different and interesting word that's strangely plot relevant to the story, then sure, you can have that character using all of the $10 words instead of the $1 ones. That's fine because that's in character. But for the most part, in conversation, when you sit down to write, you are communicating to your readers. So it is a conversation. Be understood. That is far more valuable than using big words for the sake of using big words. The long and short of it is, especially in that first draft, write whatever comes to mind when you're telling the story. Don't let the lack of vocab or your brain's inability to come up with the fancy word stop you from writing your story. Don't let it stifle your creativity. Instead, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 